Hello everyone, this is Model Gaming Show episode 52 for the week of November 18th. I'm your host, GW Fox. I hope you all had a pleasant Thanksgiving, and that is something I want to touch briefly on for this episode. There are too many things to list that I'm thankful for, but I definitely wouldn't be where I am today or who I am today without video games. I've been playing them since I was five years old on the NES, and they've always been a big part of my life. And truly, I hope that I'll be able to play them well into old age. Continuing on, I want to highlight what I felt were the very best Black Friday deals, and that are actually worth it. Coincidentally, they're all for PS4. The first was the Spider-Man PS4 bundle for $200. It's basically an impulse buy at that price point, and Target had them available last Sunday, which is when I bought it. Sony really wants to move PS4s this holiday season, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that same deal return for Christmas. To go along with that, I got PlayStation Plus for 40 bucks on the PlayStation Store, which is amazing, and I immediately downloaded Yakuza Kiwami, which goes for 20 bucks. So while I'm not particularly happy that I waited this long to get a PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Plus, to get a system, an online service, Spider-Man and Yakuza Kiwami, for 260 bucks after tax is a great deal. Uh, the next two deals I was unable to secure and those were God of War for $17 and Horizon Zero Dawn Complete for $10 at GameStop. Those are ridiculous prices. And God of War was going for $25 elsewhere, which I caved in and bought. Uh, the last great deal is for the PlayStation DualShock, DualShock controller in various colors going for 39 bucks. Um, my friend owns an independent game shop and he told me he pays $51 for cost for those controllers. So to be $12 under that is a tremendous deal. And besides, controllers are rarely discounted. Um, for the major story tonight, I wanna to discuss Valve's new card game artifact. To be upfront, I've only ever played one card game, and that's Gwent. And it was only for a few hours when it first launched, and I really have no intention of playing any others. While researching this, I went on Valve's forums and want to credit a user by the name of Ace Zero, AC3ZR0, for giving a detailed, accurate, and funny takedown of the pay structure of this game, and I want to just relay that to you here verbatim. First you pay $20, then you pay for card packs and more cards, $2 per pack. Card RNG is shit, actually better than Hearthstone, but still a good chance you won't get what you want. So you pay even more for cards on the market. You realize that that was all a waste and constructed as shit. Maybe not. I just need to move on to talking about draft. Lol. So you decide to play draft. You also need to pay a ticket for expert constructed, which is constructed with rewards. You need to pay a dollar, one ticket pack, five tickets for five dollars. Every time you phantom draft, you need to win three to get your ticket back, four to get a pack, five to get two packs. You lose two times and you're gone. Keepers draft. You need to pay two tickets and five packs, $12 value, to keep your cards after you win. You sell your kidneys, you pay your taxes, you realize the futility of life. So Valve responded to this outcry with a blog post detailing changes coming soon to the game, including drafting with friends, practicing draft modes, and recycling unwanted cards into the events. But those fixes don't really address the main point of contention for this game. You're paying 20 bucks up front to play a free-to-play game, Historically, digital card games are free to play, at least for the base game, and then you have to grind to get cards. The reason for this is because the cards have no inherent value because they're digital, and the rarity of each card can be manipulated by Valve. In this instance, you're paying 20 bucks for a free to play model to get a couple of starter decks and some packs and then grind for cards. And then you have to pay to get more packs and cards. And then you have to pay to keep the cards that you win. And then you have to pay for tickets to enter events to win cards. Sounds pretty ridiculous, right? So I understand that Valve wants to make money off of a game that they put out. But this whole system just seems very, very greedy. I honestly believe most people would be absolutely fine paying the $20 up front for the game. I certainly would, would be. But to charge for almost every other thing feels like some serious microtransaction nickel and diming BS. I hope Valve actively listens to the feedback on this, and I'm really curious to see what pricing structure looks like when the game actually releases, because it's just in beta. 
So I'll keep you posted on any major announcements going forward. And I think it's really an interesting story concerning one of the largest video game companies in the industry. Um, the major new release for this week is Battlefield 5, which currently has a 79 on Open Critic. Uh, frankly, that's a bit disappointing. And from what I've read, it seems like an incomplete product. This game was already delayed once, and I wonder if it would have been smart to delay it even more, especially out of this busy holiday season. Um, that is going to do it for tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to catch me every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for this show, and Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for my streams on twitch.tv slash modelgamingshow. I'd greatly appreciate the follow, and also catch me on Instagram and Twitter at GWFAWKES. That's GW Fox. Thank you so much, and I hope you all truly had a happy Thanksgiving.